sing his song about heaven and sit there with an arms crossed and a sire on your face. That ain't salvation, that's indigestion. I got something inside of me that's exciting. The older I get, the closer I'm getting to the place that I'm looking forward to spend an eternity. Heaven is real to me. Boy, I'll tell you something, preacher. My wife and I were reading, and she saw that passage that said that we're going to have a new body. Honey, yeah. she looked at me, and now she's getting excited. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. I just tease her, but I tell you, I believe, I believe what the book says about yeah. that. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Amen. is coming again. Amen. Amen. We got any prodigals in the house? Amen. I hear an amen. Yes. Good place for it for some of us. I don't know about you, brother, but I had a hard time relating to many friends that would just stand up and say, I was saved when I was a young boy. Went to church all my life. Just attended church. Got married. Ain't done much exciting except serve Jesus. That don't sound dull to me. I'll tell you what sounds dull to me. If somebody that was raised in a Christian home, and as a young boy, because he didn't understand certain things that was taking place within his family, that he took his eyes off Jesus. How many of those we can't take our eyes off Jesus? Amen. That he made a very poor decision and said, boy, if that's Christianity, I don't want nothing to do with it. Right. Sit down and talk to your children. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And more so, can I tell you from my own experience, do a better job than me. Yeah. Sit down and listen to your children. Yeah. 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 When your children's children Need someone to listen to. Right. You listen. Yeah. And when they need someone to talk to, right. Right. you listen. Amen. And let me reverse that. Talk to them when they need to listen. You listen when they talk. Right. Amen. But there was something instilled in me, and I think I shared this with you all back a few years ago, growing up in the hills of West Virginia. And, and my life was... That first 12 years was just going to church and going to Grandma's house on Sunday afternoons and eating fried chicken and apple pie and singing gospel music till it was time to go back again that night. Not until I moved to Titusville in 1960 did I know anybody had a choice about going to church. And these young kids think they got a drug problem. Honey, I was drugged to church every time the doors were open. Whether I wanted to or not. I didn't know anybody had a choice. I thank God for that heritage. I thank God for those songs that I listened to. Because as a young teenage boy, I was so bitter, so angry. It wasn't that I didn't have good folks and Christian relatives to talk to. I decided I didn't want to talk to nobody. I'd just do it on my own. You ever felt that way? Even today in your Christian walk, do you sometimes struggle with that? Hello. Amen. Can I tell you this? We're not here tonight by any mere circumstance. Not one of us. Not one of us. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And through all this good music and a little shouting and having a great time, it would be foolish to not take the time now and listen to that small voice that wants to speak to each of our hearts. I'm so glad that God sustained me in the prayers of my family and the grace of God kept me safe for 35 years of my life until I couldn't run no more. Amen. I had a head knowledge, 
My sinner's prayer wasn't so tough. God, I messed it up bad. It even affects the ones that I care about and the ones that care so much about me. I'm so unworthy of your forgiveness. Can I tell you something? If you listen closely, you know what you'll respond to that? <coughs> when were you ever worthy? Amen. <laughs> Hello? <coughs> but if you'll forgive me, if you'll come into my heart, take the throne of my life, God, I'll do my best to serve you. I'm glad of that day. August the 15th, 1982. Amen. And I'll tell you what I tell many folks. <coughs> the man that took his children and his wife to Sunday school that morning. Going home, them boys didn't make a sound. Nobody in the car. Nobody really understood what was going on. And I said, boys, my little girl, she was about three years old. Two boys just coming into their adolescent age. I said, I know you don't understand this. I don't understand all of it myself. But let me tell you this, boys. The daddy that took you to church this morning is it the man yes, who's taking you home this afternoon. And I've never been the same. Don't wait as long as I did. Don't run as long. Don't think that you'll ever enjoy serving the devil. Let me tell you, not one day. For the 20 years that I ran from God was absolutely miserable. Amen. Had too many praying for me. Could not be so miserable. <laughs> Make your way down front in a little bit. Settle any issue. Child of God, if you're carrying fear and worry and strife, it's a sin in your life. Amen. Confess it. If you're carrying a burden, the burden bearer is here. Let's leave it to the burden. Amen. If you're here and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, listen to that voice and make the greatest choice in your life. Amen. It's very possible that every one of us, 30 minutes after we leave this building, will forget 80% of what's been said and done here tonight. It's our nature. So let's be obedient to God. Amen. I want, Brian, I want you to do something. I ask you if you're, I know that everybody's not a prodigal, but everybody can relate to a prodigal. At some point in our life, we've looked and seen, if no one else, our Heavenly Father standing, ready to run to us and embrace us, Amen. ready to forgive us again. If any of you ever had a lot with your mom and your dad, I trust that they're still with you, that you'll take every opportunity to tell them you love them and you appreciate them. If they're gone, my prayer is I hope you had a chance to restore and find restoration on anything that was between you. I thank God that I had that opportunity. Such a peace for me. So it's given me something so rich and so real to share to my children and now to my six grandchildren. When I first heard this song, Jim Hamill sang it many years ago, and I love it, and I know you like it. Ryan does a good job on it. Ryan, sing a little bit of this song about this fellow coming home. <laughs> 